New York in black and white, it is not always a pretty picture, certainly not a simple one. Strain between racial groups can grow tense as it has over the past year demonstrably. But even when the relations are at their best, between black and white, relations are far from perfect. All week now, we've taken a special look at race relations in our series called New York in Black and White. Tonight, Channel 2's Reggie Harris shows us that not even wealth or celebrity status always help bridge the gap. A New York, New York, big city of dreams. <laughs> But everything in New York ain't always what it seems. That color ain't right. This is white and this neighborhood will be white. America. You might get fooled if you come from out of town. The image of New York is not the reality of New York. New York is racist. But I'm down by law and I know my way around. I think in New York that we're much more tolerant of people than we really think. New York, New York, the big apple. It's a weirdness now. Racism is more prevalent now and than it's ever been. You know, it's like it's getting worse than getting better. You feel it? Oh, yeah. Everybody has certain built-in prejudices. I don't mean black or white prejudices. I mean, people, you look at somebody, it depends how they're dressed. There are times I can't get a taxi cab uh, just because of my appearance. Uh, was his beard, is because I'm black, a combination of the two. Uh, but it's always been that way. New York, New York, the big... New York, New York. New York is known as a melting pot, but actually we are a city of cities. Harlem, Hollis, Bay Ridge, Bayside, and all the others. We work together, but live, worship, and play a part. Manhattan, Friday night, and the working world is winding down. In West Midtown, the bar is packed at B. Smith's restaurant. They call themselves Buffy's, black young urban professionals heading for the weekend. Across town, the Coconut Grill on the Upper East Side is also crowded, but like their crosstown counterparts, don't call this crowd yuppies. Both rooms filled with different views of race relations, but not totally different. If a black person's in charge, if they have a role of a position of authority, where they are uh, running professionals in particular, whites just don't know how to deal with that. Sometimes uh, uh, people do have a grudge and they, they, they carry a chip on their shoulders from uh, 100, 200 years ago from the slave days. This is a white society and for black people to progress, it, it, it would mess up their whole system. I would find it more difficult, I would think, if I was black in New York now trying to uh, set out and get out from some of the hardships they do have. There's never a time that you're not black. Never a time. Most blacks will tell you they feel a sort of background level of racial tension in the city. Daily reminders that blacks are seen as suspicious by many white New Yorkers. A woman may clutch a bag a little tighter, or, uh, uh, you know, a guy will tend to, you know, give you that once over, you know. There's so many routine insults that blacks endure daily, just going into stores. I just came shopping for the poriums, and the security follows me around, but the white people, they don't follow them. Or getting on elevators. My own building, where I have a, an ownership interest in this building, and it, last night when I was going, got on the elevator, a white woman got on the elevator and gasped when she realized she was going to have to ride the elevator all the way down. You can see the panic in her face. And there is the ever-present cab crisis. Lots of cabbies won't pick up blacks, even if they're dressed for business. If dressed casually and you're black, getting a cab can be almost impossible. I came out of the gym one day a couple weeks ago, uh, and I didn't have a suit and tie on. I had a sweatsuit. Uh, and, uh, I mean, this guy looked at me and locked the door. 60 Minutes correspondent Ed Bradley routinely files complaints with the Taxi and Limousine Commission. There are more subtle reminders of racial pressure. Black executives say the business world often doesn't want to do business with them. Earl Graves is founder and publisher of Black Enterprise Magazine. Well, this is the financial and communications hub of the world, New York City. And it is tougher here to sell the importance of the black consumer to the advertising community because of their indifference. Funny man Eddie Murphy, currently shooting a new movie in Queens, says he feels more racial pressure now than when he wasn't rich and famous because now he goes more places Probably where blacks are rare. When I walk into a place where black people don't come, they don't see Eddie Murphy, they say, who's this black guy first? And an older person say, oh, we have no, we can't help you out. Then someone says, that's, that's the guy. He's not black. He's green. He has money. And it's that kind of thing. It's real weird. And that makes you madder, you know? That makes you madder. 
makes me mad. It's not uncommon to make a point by making a joke. Black comedians have always used their talents to keep us laughing and to make us step back and look at ourselves. And white America is so scared of black teenagers. I walk down the streets and everybody's tucking in their chains and big 300 pound white guys start flexing, trying to scare me. I weigh 120 pounds soaking wet holding a brick, okay? Why are they scared of me? Maybe it's the brick, okay. It could only happen to white people, E.T. You would fall in love with the long neck, big eyed, bald headed, green, ugly little bastard from space. Drag him home, beg him to live with you, and you cannot live next door to black folks for five minutes. It's sick. It's real sick. Because all kinds of people just sort of reach out mm -hmm. and love one another. It's as plain as black and white. Reggie Harris, Channel 2 News.